Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is your boy Dr. Rogers, a research professor here in South Korea. So if you're a non-native English speaker like myself, you will just know how challenging it can be to write research papers in English. And sometimes our papers get rejected just because of English problems. We pour a lot of our hard work time putting our hearts into research, but sometimes small errors in grammar, spelling and punctuation can be a distraction from our hard work or make our papers quite difficult to understand. But however, you do not need to worry because in this video, we are going to be discussing four amazing free English editing tools that can help you to polish your English. But however, before we dive into that, if you haven't subscribed yet on our channel, make sure you do subscribe Click on the notification bell so that each time we load a new video, you'll be notified about it. And also give us some thumbs up as a form of encouragement for our videos. So in this video, like I mentioned before, we're going to be discussing step uh, four tools which you can use in order to proofread your work after writing when preparing them. Either you're a student or a researcher or just someone looking forward to improve their writing skills so let's dive into the video and take a writing to the next level so one of the english software is what you call easy to get it you just need to go to google and you type easy e a s b so once you type that you're going to find it on google search then you go for but before you if you type and open that you're going to see that there are other uh, common softwares which other people use but you will search for the free grammar and plagiarism version so when you open it this is what you're going to find on your desktop and then you have to open click on the box section where they say paste your paper or upload your paper so basically you can go to google um to word document you copy the information you've been working on you copy it and then you take it to the proofreader so once on the proofreader you're going to copy and then you paste it into the square section and then you check your paper you're going to click on check so once you click on check is going to process the paper so the paper you can either paste it or you can upload it from your computer in this particular case you do not really need to sign it either you can create an account or you sign it so when you check it's going to give you the, the google score of that paper so <coughs> sorry once you check that you can see um the boxes in to your left the boxes in green are telling you what has been corrected or proofread so if you read it and this actually makes sense to you you can click on it to, to agree so uh, what the box in green does is it paraphrases your work so but it does not completely changes the whole paraphrasing it changes some few words and suggest to you is this appropriate for you you can either accept it or you can delete like the, the trash back you delete it meaning you decline it and then you have to read through it to be sure that this is what you want after you correct everything the other one is quillibot quillibot sorry if i don't pronounce it well but quillibot with double l is what you get it you can get it through google um, search so when you get into query board, you have to go for the grammar check section. But if you just click on query board, make sure you go to grammar checker for the query board session. With query board, I'm not pretty sure, but you do not really need to sign in in some cases in order to use it unlike um, Grammarly and the other ones where you have to sign in. So query board gives you these options. And then it marks the, 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 the areas in red to show you if you accept to replace it or not green means go ahead and red means the sentence is faulty so you should um, either accept it or reject it and then you've got to read when you read it and it makes sense to you then you can proceed with that 
And then the thing with Quilly Board is that the free version will give you grammar recommendations um, and all of that, and also the writing score. So, for example, in this case, you will see um, the, the areas in red, my text, the whole text shows that these are the areas that ought to be changed, which can be replaced to improve the clarity of the text. Mind you, this is the same text I used on Easybit and also on, on ChatGTP. So the one in yellow shows you um, the sentence still has a problem. So you need to see read well to show that the clarity is required. This is the free. Another sort of way being used to proofread is what we call Grammarly. This one is known by lots of people. There is the Grammarly free version and the 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 free. This is the free version and the premium version. But you can go for free online grammar checker. But in this case, with Grammarly, you need to to log in, and you can see here because I don't use Grammarly a lot, so I have to first of all log into it. If you don't log in, then um, you cannot use it. So feel free. You either create an account or you can log in with your Google account into um, Grammarly in order to check your check your sentences if they make sense. So in this case, I'm showing you how you can sign in. So you sign in as I, I use my Google account to be able to sign into um, Grammarly. So I did sign in in this case, and I'm waiting for it to. Um, sign in or you can create an account or you tell them that you have an account so I did sign on my Google account because I think it's a product from Google so once I'm in Grammarly using the same text it shows that I have just one error so in Grammarly there's an the option of accept and dismiss and Grammarly classifies into three into correctness clarity engagement and delivery I think in the past Grammarly used to um, you also the tone, the professional tone, or just the mere tone of all of that. So you choose what you want. So the ones in yellow, another software is ChatGTP. So you can use also use ChatGTP. You get it from Google Scholar. I've made a video on this before, but in this case, when you get into ChatGTP. You can you have to log in before you can proceed here. I already have my account login, so you can see my little picture up there. So you've got to log in and on chat GTP you have to give the instructions of what you want. For example, in this case, I said English proofread this text and show the math changes because I want to see where the changes have been made so that I can either read and see if it makes sense or not. Then after you do that, the text you have, you can copy and paste it in that box or you can directly upload it. And then you give ChatGTP the command to go ahead. So this is what um, ChatGTP did on the text I did. So it shows me, it added a comma after third, then change, so it by it changed that statement into the other statement so and um, it changed to wider reach from that statement to a wider range by coordination for better outlook so this is a good thing about G chat gtp but you have to be very careful because a lot of journals do discourage the use of directly using ai to write papers so if you use if you must use this make sure you study the work and cross check to be sure that uh, you eliminate all the AI super so conversations. You learn four tools that can be helpful in writing your research paper. So, which one is your favorite? Let us know in the comment section. And if you have found this video helpful, do not forget to like, to share, subscribe, and click on the notification bell for more valuable insights. Thank you for watching and best of luck in your publishing journey.